first of all, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. I, at some point, will survey every each and of each and every one of you to find out how we got you here today because um, we always like to know where people hear about the campaign, where people hear about us. I want to start though by thanking Linda for opening up her home today. <laughs> really appreciate you putting this together and um, it means a lot to me to be here in Carson. This is a city where um, I went to school. I went to Stephen White Junior High School. I learned to swim at the Carson pool. Actually my mother, she was an immigrant from Mexico and when she was a child she almost drowned. So one of the very first things that she said when we were kids is I'm gonna make sure that all of my children know how to swim. And so we would spend a lot of time at the Carson pool here and then we would walk to the library which is right down the street from there. And so um, I remember using the old fashioned you know, card catalog system there and the microfiche there. And I walked in there about a, six months ago and I asked, like, hey, do you guys still have those? And they're like, oh no, we got rid of those a long time ago. But it is for me to be back here um, and we do spend time here, um, means a lot to me. So thank you for opening up your home here. Uh, really appreciate that. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'll tell you about the race, state of the race, um, why I got into this race, and then we'll do Q&A. Um, so let me just start a little bit about, about my background. My parents were immigrants. They came from Mexico. My mom had a third grade education. And one of the things that they told me when I was growing up is they said, Nanette, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer. That's the only way you're going to get out of this world. And because we were very poor. We were on government assistance when I was a kid. Now, when I see blood, I want to pass out. So for me, it was very easy. I said, well, I think I'm going to go to law school. Now, it turned out that I liked history and I liked politics. I would see the Capitol on television, and I thought that was really neat. So it worked out really well for me. Now, in this district, only 10% of students go on to college, 10%. Now, the district starts at San Pedro and includes the Port of LA, which, is by, by the way, is the largest economic engine in the region. And then it goes to Wilmington, Carson, Compton, Watts, Linwood, North Long Beach, and into Southgate. This is a district that is 70% Latino. It is an in, in, a district that is very high immigrant community. I'm not just talking about Latinos, I'm talking about Croatians and Greek and Italian and San Pedro, very high immigrant community. And I'm blessed to have been raised here and have lived here for 31 of my 40 years because of the diversity and the richness that it really brings. So I'm one of those lucky 10%ers who beat the odds. I went to UCLA undergrad and then USC for law school. I've gotten a piece of the American dream, but now I'm running to make sure others have that same opportunity. And that in a nutshell is why I'm running for Congress. Now, I can tell you that when I was in, co when I was in college, I walked into the Career Center one day and I said, hey, I see Washington on television all the time. And I'm a political science major. Maybe I could visit one day. And it was a counselor who said to me, Nanette, you could do whatever you want. And I said, I have no political connections. My parents are not political donors. How would I ever get a job in Washington? And he said, just apply. Well, the next thing you know, I was working in the White House, working on African American outreach. And I saw so many people who had my story, people who looked like me. And that inspired me to come home and to work harder so that I too maybe one day could serve a president. And that's what I thought. Now I loved it so much that in 1999, a year later, I went back to work with the NAACP on the Hill, looking at the issue of racial health disparities, where different races were being treated differently. I also, we were looking at social justice issues. Back then, we were talking about racial profiling. What has happened now? It's just gotten worse. It has just gotten worse. Criminal justice reform, these are all issues that I worked on, and this is not new. It's not like I'm running for Congress and saying, hey, by the way, I care about this issue now. My life's track record hasn't been, fighting, hasn't been about really fighting for these issues and working across the communities, all communities. So I got home and I finished at UCLA. I went on, I went to law school, and then I graduated and I got out with a ton of debt. A ton of debt. Right? Last summer, I had the chance 
to listen to Bernie before he made it big. And he talked about this issue and it really resonated with me. And when I remember turning and leaning to somebody and saying, he talks about what I talk about. And they say, no, 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 you're talking about what he's talking about. <laughs> and I said, but this is personal for me. Like, I know what it's like when you come out with so much debt and you can't do what you want to do, the public interest work, because you're just saddled with all of this, what I call a mortgage payment, right? At least with the mortgage payment, you can get a refinance at a lower rate. For student loans, it's so high. So I took a job at a law firm and I put away every single penny I had to pay down that high interest debt that I had from student loans. You know, and there's two layers. There's a student loan private and the student loan federal. And for me, I was, my job was really to bring down that debt. Now my father died when I was 23 when I was in college. He never lived to see me graduate from college. So I was taking care of my mom at the same time. And so college affordability and making sure that we have debt-free college is so very important. I believe that education is the number one equalizer. The number one equalizer. Talk about opportunity. We all just want a chance, a shot at the American dream. And how do you get there? In school, education. In this district, people tell me I can't afford to go to college. I say you can't afford not to go to college. Now some students don't want to go to college, and that's okay. But we have to have job training programs for them to make sure that they have an opportunity to get a piece of the American dream. Now my family's been in San Pedro for 40 years. My sisters have been there for a very long time. I come from a household of longshoremen. So for me, knowing exactly what it's like to work down at the port, knowing exactly what it's like when the hours that they have, day shift, night shift, casual, working your way up, right? So I happen to live in San Pedro right now. And one of the things I remember my sister telling me when I was looking for a place to live is she says, Nanette, go as far south as you can go and make sure you're west of Gaffey. And I said, why is that? She says, because there's a lot of air pollution out here. And she herself, at a very young age, had breast cancer and believes it's tied to the pollution that was there. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this district is one of the most heavily polluted districts in the entire country. I've spent the last several years fighting an oil company that wanted to drill for oil right in neighborhoods and into the Santa Monica Bay along the California coastline. Now, while I was doing that, my opponent was taking all the money from the oil companies and was fighting for them in Sacramento. So when people ask me, Nene, how come you got into this race? I said, well, because it's very personal. One is, I grew up here. My family's here. I want to make sure we send a representative that's going to be fighting for us, not their largest corporate donors. And then I heard about the deal that was made. You might say, what deal? Well, nobody was supposed to run against my opponent. Nobody. That's right. When I got into this race, people told me, get out of the race. It's not your turn. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean? The seat was promised to somebody else. So in 2011, my opponent was running against the current congresswoman. They were both running for the seat. It was an open seat. She went to him and she said, get out of this race and support me. If you do that, you will be next in line. And I said, don't we still live in a democracy? Don't the voters still decide who serves their best interest? So I said, you know what? All my life, people have been telling me, you can't do this. Whether it's because my parents were immigrants or because we didn't have any money or because I had no political connections. You know, when I ran for city council, I used to live in Hermosa Beach. People told me, Nanette, you can't win here. There are no Latinos here. I said, you know what? We'll see how it goes. I knocked on doors. I talked about the issues. I was willing to take a position on the oil drilling issue, and people told me then, what are you doing? You don't know which way the wind's blowing. That's the problem in politics today. When you have people deciding that they're just going to wait. They don't want to take a position. They don't want to stand with the community. They don't want to stand for public health. They're too afraid something's too controversial. So we took a position early, and I told people about it, and the voters rewarded me. I not only won, I came in first place, and we beat a former chief of police who was supposed to walk right into the vacant seat. So when people tell me I can't do something, that just motivates me to work harder. It really does. And I'm also reminded about the power of people. This oil company spent $2 million in two months trying to defeat 
I'd rather try to convince people that this was such a great thing to drill 34 oil and water injection wells. But what did we do? We mobilized people. Every one of you here can make that difference in this race. This is how we get our message out. We tell people who I am. We tell people who we're fighting for. And I can't do it without you. Because money and politics is buying our elected officials.